Mount Feathertop is the crown jewel of the Victorian high country and the second tallest mountain in the state. Its pyramid-like summit pierces the skyline unlike any other mountain in the region, commanding the attention of eyeballs from far and wide. There are many ways to reach the summit, but the most popular route traverses the 11 km Razorback Ridgeline. However, the story doesn't have to end at the summit. G'day everyone, we are on the Razorback today heading towards Mount Feathertop but unlike everyone else we've got to take it that little little bit extra. We're going to go over the top of Feathertop and explore the northern side of the Razorback which is a fairly less travelled area of the mountain. As you can imagine people are going to start at the Great Alpine Road, make their way across and then get to the summit of Feathertop and then head back down. But for us, we'd like to check out the lesser explored places. Sun's out, but the wind's out too, so I apologise in advance for the audio quality. Uh, but hey, what can you do? I'll keep you guys updated when the wind isn't blowing a gale, but we'll, I don't think that'll be too many times. So let's crack on. You can see as soon as you start walking on this track why it's so popular with everyone. You can see all across the high country, or at least all of the really significant parts, you get to see Feathertop, Fainters, the High Plains, Bogong when you get a little bit further on. And it's great because, I mean, it is so accessible to everyone. So really, if you put aside a day to do it, you get to experience all this fairly easily. So today's a pretty big mission. It's about 11 kilometers one way to reach Feathertop from the Great Alpine Road. But as we're going over and down to the North Trailhead, which is accessed via Stony Tops track, which my poor little two wheel drive wouldn't even dream to make it up there. So we're forced to go all the way across, which adds about nearly nine kilometers on top of the 22 kilometer return and a fair chunk more elevation gain as well. So it's about, yeah, 30 kilometers today, 1500 meters of vert. And we've got a pretty juicy cold front coming in as well at the end of the day. So we're hoping to try and make decent time because we really don't want to be up here when that cold front comes through. It's bringing about 100 mils of rain. The Razorback Track and really all of the trails around Mount Feathertop as of recent times are very well maintained, most likely due to the mountain's overall popularity. Even lesser travelled tracks such as the North Razorback, as we were soon to discover, are in good condition. But regrowth does like to creep back, so make sure you fill in trip intention books to let parks know that people like to visit the area. That way they'll be more likely to keep clearing the trails. We're making our way up to the summit of Mount Feathertop now. I reckon we've been doing pretty good for time. We've only been on the trail for about two hours. We're heading up this final steep section and then we get into the part that I personally haven't seen and not many people venture down to, which is the north side. So I'm really looking forward to checking out views of the, the eastern face. I've seen a couple photos we get to see with our own eyes what it looks like, as long as we don't get blown off the top on Feathertop. Mount Feathertop stands as the highest point along the Razorback, and the final climb from the south is around 150 metres, which isn't much at all. Where the mountain gets its infamous character is from its western and eastern faces, which stretch down to the valley floor with ruthlessly steep gullies and spurs. Driving in along the Great Alpine Road really demonstrates these features as Feathertop sits a good 1500 metres above the Ovens Valley. Dropping off Feathertop now. 
and it just looks really spectacular this side of the mountain. I've never actually been past the second summit of Fevertop. I'm pretty sure the second one's the false one. Uh, not too sure, but anyway, I've never gone past it because I'm, I'm usually summiting this mountain under snow. How good's this trailhead, eh? I didn't expect to see it being pretty much right in the middle of a very thin ridge line. The full drive track goes all the way up to this point here. It's a really interesting side of the mountain. I'm glad that we've taken the drop, but now it's time to torture ourselves and head right back up again. I feel like I'm dying. It's just a mismatch. I can't handle the heat, yet I live in Australia. <laughs> I don't think it makes sense. Oh boy. The drop from the summit of Mount Fevertop to the northern ridgeline is around 500 metres, a much larger climb when compared to that of the southern approach. Having already walked the 15 kilometres to reach the northern trailhead, along with the afternoon sun, the uphill changed from just a steep climb to an almighty slog. So the North Razorback didn't manage to kill me on the way up, although at some times throughout that hike, I definitely thought it would. Well, for better or maybe worse, just depending on how it goes, the low pressure system's moved in and it's brought some well needed and probably rightfully deserved cold air to cool off everything. So it's nice mountain temperatures now. So we gotta still go another nine kilometers to get back to the car. The legs are still working, thankfully, so I've got to put them to use now and try and get out of here before that storm hits. We're alive, but I'd say barely. It's been a bit of a slog getting back across the Razorback. But the evening light is just beautiful. And the cold front brought in the well needed cool air that's been helping to keep me cooled off. Andrew, in typical Andrew fashion, has gone and stormed off into the distance as I'm pretty sure that he's a Terminator. The reason being is that I don't think he feels any pain and I'm pretty sure he doesn't feel any emotion. All he does is he's got one job and he just walks. Been a good walk anyway. Highly recommend this one. Maybe if you like your sanity, take on the, the North Razorback after spending the night at Federation Hut. That might be a, a better way to go about it instead of trying to do the entire ridgeline in a day. It's a lot of up and down and the climbing Mount Fevertop twice certainly takes it out of you.